is up, Warrior Crew? Welcome back to part two of our core intensive series. My name is Jacob Mellish. I'm a professional surfer and global brand warrior for Warrior Addict. And today I'm going to take you through a 30 minute core intensive practice. It's a progression from our part one. We're going to take it slow to start and we're going to slowly build the intensity. Remember, if you find these movements really easy, feel free to progress forward into the future series classes. Or if you find this too challenging, go back in class, stay on part one until you feel ready to move forward. Otherwise, take it easy, have some fun with these movements, and let's actually get started in a standing position today, please. So it's quite relevant uh, just to take a moment to warm up the spine. Uh, one of the healthiest things you can do, and one of my favorite exercises to share with you, to start to feel a little bit more open, a little bit more mobile, and even from that, you might even feel a little bit more energized. So bring the feet to hip width distance apart. And just take a moment to feel the connection of your feet to the floor. And then as you breathe in, push your hips forward, lift your chest up. You can place the hands at your lower back. Just try to be really kind and soft to your body as you start this, this movement practice. Lift the chin and then tuck the chin into your chest, bend your knees, and you'll start to flex your spine. So how much can you actually turn in your spine into a C-shape, into a rounding. And keep that, that little flexion going until you can't go any further towards the floor. Feel free to bend the knees as much as you might need to bend the knees here. And then as you reach the bottom position, just check in with the feet. Are you clenching your toes? Or can you really feel this solid weight distribution underneath the feet from the big toe mount pushing down the outer edges of the feet pushing down and the heels of your feet still evenly balanced through that distribution. Take a full inhale at the bottom. And enjoy a long, full exhalation. Try to soften as you let go of any stress and tension here. And then so reverse the movement, starting with the head lifting. You'll start to move into a back bend in this almost forward fold position as much as you can. Try to keep arching your spine, keep arching your spine, hands to lower back, take a breath in, lift chin and chest. Exhale, tuck chin into the chest, bend your knees, curl the spine, move on down. As you inhale, begin the back bend, push the hips forward, lift the chin up. And then as you exhale, once again, you'll find a lot more ability to flex your spine by bending the knees. And you keep this flowing, so as you inhale, you come up. And as you exhale, you go down. Don't stress your body too much about trying to do this the most challenging active way. But this is merely, this is merely just a little warmer to start allowing you to feel embodied, to feel presence in the sensations of your body. So as we start to uh, level up a little bit more, a little bit more, you're going to feel much more present in the way that you move your body. And you'll be able to maybe even explore a much stronger potential of what you're capable of. Especially when you use this, this beginning part of the class to really connect to your breath. So exhale down, inhale up, exhale down, inhale up. Just take about three more rounds as you keep it flowing on your own. Come into a tabletop position, find all fours. And try and mimic that same action. So from all fours, lift the tailbone, squeeze the shoulder blades down your back, lift the chin. You can stretch the neck or feel free to always take any little intuitive movements here in your body. Can you really exaggerate this tabletop position or rather cow position as you inhale? Knees underneath hips, hands underneath shoulders. And then exhale, see if you can just move the, from the lower back, really taking your time, then working your spine like a wave all the way to the upper back, the chin tucks in last. Try to reverse the action, starting at the lower back, one vertebra at a time, how precise can you get? Lifting the chin last. Try that just two more times and then we'll progress from there. But this really detailed spinal waves, they can be so good for understanding your body, understanding isolating through your body, controlling your body. And once again, 
moving or warming up into your spine is one of the healthiest movements that I can recommend. Okay, now find a neutral spine. You're going to come into bear position. So as you neutralize your spine, you want to broaden your collarbones, keep the belly in, keep pushing the floor away, and then hover the knees a centimeter off the floor. From here, it's, you'll find a bit more balance by taking the feet a tiny bit wider. Keep the knees, both of them, one centimeter off the floor. And then imagine squeezing the inner thighs whilst pulling the knees apart from each other. Push the floor away so you get a little bit more protraction through the upper back. Hold for three, two, one. Gently lower the knees to the floor and then spin the fingers so they face backwards. If at any stage you feel a little fatigue, a little um, challenge through the wrist, feel free to come back to this uh, wrist stretch at any stage. If you do find it too intense, you can take the one arm variation of this wrist stretch. Let's go round two. This is one of my favorite ways of, of activating to the core. Feet nice and wide. Bear position, hover the knees a centimeter off the floor. Now really focus on not moving any part of your body as you come up to the right fingertips. Check both knees are still the same distance away from the floor and your lower back is level. Right hand down, same on the left side, left fingertips, try not to change anything. Keep suctioning into the core. You can even imagine the right hand pulling back and the feet trying to pull forward, like you're trying to crumple up your yoga mat. Hand down, knees down, flip fingers so they face backwards again. Take a little cat cow, maybe finding that same kind of intelligence as you move through your slide. Okay, we're going to keep going. Feel free to stay with any of those previous little levels or I'll give you a little bit more. Tuck toes, hover knees, push floor away. Feet nice and wide, you'll find balance. Come onto right fingertips or place right hand onto left shoulder. Whew. If you can, maybe even stretch right hand forward. Check both knees are the same distance away from the floor. Right hand down, same with the left side. Try to stay with it, stay strong, left hand, right shoulder. Maybe you can reach the left hand forward, check the both knees are one centimeter off the floor. And then gently lower hand, gently lower knees. Remember the previous progression, you can keep the fingers down if you find that a little easier. Push back to child pose and just take a full breath. Remember, if you're finding any fatigue or any pain into your wrist, take a moment, give them some love. We'll do two more progressions and then we'll start to move on. But using this awareness or this movement to find awareness into your core is so great for then applying it into actual yoga transitions. For example, something like moving from Chaturanga, up dog, even when you move back into down dog, you know now how to get your core active into the positions. Okay, return to tabletop. Tuck toes, feet wide, push floor away, hover knees one centimeter. Right fingertips, notice how the right knee wants to lift. Can you keep the knees in line? Reach right hand forward. If you got that, lift the left foot, or the, yeah, the left foot, and keep the right knee one centimeter off the floor as the belly and the ribs pull in and you stretch. Come on to the other side if you're with me. Otherwise, you can choose staying on the fingertips or maybe even keeping the back foot down. Just try to find your level in which you can hold for five, four, three, two, place down, lower the knees, push back, child's pose, wipe your sweat if you need to. Use this as a chance to come back to your breath. And let's keep building that core intensity. So come onto your forearms, lower the hips down to the floor, Squeeze the shoulder blades down your back, lift your chin and your chest, and just take a moment to roll out into the neck to relieve any stress or tension that you might be carrying through the shoulders and the upper back. Breathe fully. Now tuck your toes behind you and very slowly feel this chain-like reaction from the heels pushing back. Notice when that happens, the knees lift and the glutes fire up. Slowly begin to lift your pubic bone, push the floor away, and hold your forearm plank. Try to get as high up onto the tippy toes for an extra challenge. Keep energizing the elbows towards each other as you push the floor away. You can even think about broadening through the shoulder heads. Hold for five, 
four, three, two. Slowly lower the hips to the floor. Inhale into Sphinx. From now on, we're going to go five reps, but the hips don't touch the floor. They hover. So as you exhale, chain reaction, heels back, knees lift, belly up. Lift the hips higher for this one. So you, you're trying to keep the same length of stance, but at the same time, lift your hips as high, high up as you can. Exhale, lift up. Two. Inhale. Exhale, three. You squeeze everything to the midline. Exhale, four. Exhale, five. Amazing. Hold forearm plank for five, four, three, two. Squeeze your midline. Lower the hips down. Inhale, sphinx position. Lift the chest. Squeeze shoulder blades down your back. Take a full inhale. Exhale, really gently release down to the floor. Place the hands underneath your shoulders. Squeeze your glutes as tight as you can. Tuck the toes behind you. Hug the elbows in. And then as you keep really engaged to the front body, so don't want you to see your spine arch at all. Push up tabletop. Notice how the spine stayed completely neutral. If you can keep your spine neutral, feel free to move into your full high plank position. As you take five yoga chaturanga inspired push-ups, elbows stay in, each one slow and steady. Try to squeeze the back body. That's two, three, four, five. Let's go for 10, six. Keep squeezing the body, seven. It's oof. I don't know if you saw my spine arch slightly there. Watch out, it doesn't happen to you. Nine, ten. Rest your body for a moment. Child's pose. Forehead comes down to the floor. Give your forehead a little soften, a little wiggle. Roll out side to side. So these are all my favorite drills. We're going to keep them going. Uh, this one's a great one for learning press, handstand pushing back, but it's a very accessible movement for everyone. You just gotta modify, not have any expectations of your body, and of course, just try your best. <sighs> Lift up through the chest. If at any stage, once again, if you feel any fatigue in your wrist, bring the fingers to face back and gently start to pad into your hands, maybe even bending one elbow and then bending the other. Sit up nice and tall, relax the shoulders. Place the palms down, fingers in line with knees. Push the floor away, straighten your arms. Now squeeze the knees as tight as you can into the chest, but keep the weight into the hands. So don't move back, try and move forward, knees to chest, that's your focus. Keeping the arms strong and straight, how tight can you get the knees in for five, four, three, two, slowly lower down. On one. Progression number one, feel free to stay there, but I'm sure you're gonna be okay as long as you modify to keep progressing here. Take an inhale. As you exhale, place the hands down, squeeze the knees to the chest, that's position one. Now see if you can keep the knees tight to the chest, start to lift your hips up. Weight forward in the hands for five, four, three, two. Slowly, gently lower down. One last little progression here. Keep going, you got this. Take an inhale as you prepare. Exhale, hands down, knees to chest. Hips to sky, right heel to butt, right knee stays to chest, maybe even straight and left leg for five, four, three. Slowly swap around. Left side butt, four, three, two. Gently release to the floor. Woo. Sit your butt on down. We're going to come into Navasana, so take your hands behind the knees, bring the big toes to the floor, and then for a moment, before we go into it, just feel the same kind of movements we felt in the beginning. Spinal extension, squeeze the shoulder blades down your back, lift your chest, come onto the big toes, hover the big toes, and then notice as you lose your balance, the spine starts to round. I'd rather you kept your toes on the floor, 
then really went into that rounding of your spine. So toes down, if you can hover them, but keep the chest lifted. Especially when you release the hands, you're gonna to wanna to round, but can you keep your chest nice and tall, nice and lifted? Maybe as long as you can keep the chest nice and tall, nice and lifted, think about taking the feet into the height of your knees. If you are a little bit, want a little bit more of a challenge, you can always straighten the legs, but for me, my favorite option here, keeping really honest, staying high up on the sit bones, not arching through the spine, is this, this tabletop variation. As you inhale, lower down halfway, and then as you exhale, use your core to get you back up for five, four, three, two, one. If you really struggle, you just go a little, a little lower. You don't go all the way up, you stay a little higher. Relax down to the floor, hug the knees to the chest. Let's keep this intensity going. Again, if you need to rest at any stage, take the moment, stop this video or stop what you're doing, not this video and rest, join back in immediately. Again, if it's too challenging, go back a level. If you want more spice, there will be a progression to follow this one. Knees to chest, fingers forward, squeeze knees tight, lift your tailbone off the floor. Small movement for 10, nine, keep the knees as tight as you can into the chest. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, straighten the legs up to the sky, keep reaching fingers forward, slowly begin to lower the feet until you get a sweet spot and you feel like your lower back's gonna arch out. Don't let that happen. Keep reaching fingers forward, keep lifting upper back, keep lowering feet down, hold there. Five, four, squeeze everything tight for three, two, hug your knees into your chest. Give yourself a little, a little hug. Remember through these sets to refresh, to re-energize, long, slow, deep breaths, visualizing the breath moving to the space where you created the tension. It's a great way of relieving the tension. Okay, let's get ready. Progressing from here. Knees to chest, fingers forward, nice and tight, tailbone lifts. Then from there, straighten the leg, keep fingers reaching forward. Begin to find your sweet spot. If you prefer hands into thighs, I want you to try not break shape. So notice here, I'll give you a quick demo. As you're up here, as you rock, don't do this. The body stays in one unit, so it's more together. You'll see in a moment. Just start to rock, don't break shape. Smaller rocks you'll find more effective. Again, just being really honest that you're not moving into a more flexed position from the hips but you're maintaining the position you got. For five, four, three, two, hug the knees into the chest, one. If you find that really challenging, stay there, do what you can, or progress. Legs up, legs hover, arms overhead, same thing, rock. Five, four, three, Two, one, Woo. knees to chest, give yourself that squeeze, hug inwards. We've been doing a lot of front body work, so let's just take a moment to stretch it all out. Push the palms down into the floor. Begin to lift your hips up to the sky and see if you can feel each breath creating a little bit more openness and expans expansion through your lower abdomen. See if you can almost feel how the breath can create space through the hip flexors, through the quads, where we've created so much tension in the body. And this tension, as long as you don't hold on to it, it's gonna, it's gonna convert into strength. As long as you're able to find the balance with breathing, with relaxing, with giving your body the time to recover. That's why it's something like Shavasana can be so relevant, so important. As long as you do that, the stress can be understood as, as a storm. And one of my favorite quotes is, a smooth sea never made a skilled sailor. 
This is the storm we're experiencing to build resiliency and strength in the body. Remind yourself of that when you want to give up. This is the storm and you will appreciate the calm so much more by putting in the effort and going through it, not around it. That's where you become skilled. That's where you become strong. And not only in your body, but in your mind too. Overcoming any self-limiting beliefs, mind chatter, and just giving yourself, giving yourself the opportunity to really explore your core. T-shaped arms out to the side, enough chatting, squeeze the knees together, lower the knees to the right, return to center. Slowly lower the knees to the left, keep the right shoulder blade down, return to center. If you find this a little bit easy, you are more of a challenge, you straighten the legs to the sky, legs to the right, slow and steady. Keep the left shoulder blade down. Slow and steady, legs up to the sky, and then over to the left hand side. Keep it moving, trying to lift the right shoulder to center, legs to the right. To center, legs to the left. Two more each side. Last one. Knees to center. Take a moment. And come on up to a seated position. Sit up nice and tall. Just take a moment to find your neutral spine again. From your seated position, ground the palms flat down to the floor. Here's a little fun challenge for you. Get your feet back into downward facing dog, but keep your palms flat. So hands alongside the body. If you want more of a challenge, you can take it a little bit further back. Alongside the body should be enough. Now, how are you going to get the feet back into down dog? And then do that three more times. Try your best. Whatever way you need to, feet forward. Whatever way you need to, and stay flat, feet back. You can challenge yourself a little bit more by maybe even trying to hop all the way through and slide back all the way back. Let's try two more. Feet through. Oh, slide it back. Feet through. And then come on back. Last one, guys. Move on back. Let's take one moment to stretch again into the front body. Inhale, lift the right leg. Notice how much core strength you can get by landing the heel and then the toes as far forward as you can. Right hand or right knee. Inhale, rise the left arm. Just take a moment, stretch in the front body. Left hand behind the head. Enjoy a side bend. Take a few deep breaths into your body as you think about opening up space into the areas we created the tension, bringing that balance into the practice. If it feels okay, right fingers can land to the floor. Keep breathing deeply into your front body. Return back to center, nice and slow and steady, half splits. Fingers frame the right leg, keep extension through your spine. That means to keep your spine long. Point the right toes. If you need to bend the knee, of course, bend the knee. Bring the fingers down to the floor. Now your job is to try to get the shin to touch your face. For five, four, three, two, place it down, come forward. Without scraping your right foot, Draw the right knee and the right elbow, and then take three little push-ups here. If you're struggling to get the knee to the arm, it look like that. If you want a little bit more, maybe even straight in the leg. Step back, downward facing dog, bringing the intensity. Inhale, raise the left leg to the sky. Left knee draws into the nose. Notice here, I bend the right knee. I can find this rolling through the spine as I tense it lightly. Place the foot through. It's a work in progress. Some days are better than others. Try not be hard on yourself how you get on. The right arm rises to the sky. 
lift up the chest. You can lunge through it a couple times, just trying to open up again through the right quad. And then adding that little side stretch so you feel this really beautiful opening through the right side of your body, through the front line of your body. Gently release, half splits. Spine long, fingers frame the foot, lengthen spine. Now begin to attempt to lift the left heel up. And even if you can't, just try. Five, four, three, two, whoo, one. Hands come down, toe heel the left foot to the outside of your left hand. Tuck back toes, knee squeezes, heel squeezes to butt. Take three little push-ups. One, two, three. I think we did five before. Five, lower the knees, rest your body. Find child's pose. Let's do one more little back bend to create this beautiful opening through the front body. Stand on your knees, hands to the lower back. You can face the palms up or down, it doesn't matter. Squeeze the elbows in, push your hips forward, lift your heart up, and breathe slowly, breathe fully. Sit the hips down, take any little movements necessary to feel settled, and then settle yourself down into a moment of full body release and relaxation. So soften your face, a little smile as you acknowledge your effort that you put into your core, into your body, into every system that, every cell that is you, and just relax. Allow the eyelids to seal shut and soften, unclench your jaw, and see if you can shine attention and awareness to every part of you, and as you do that, relax. Start with the breath. Feel free to pause the video to chill here a little longer, especially if you are feeling a little out of breath, a little tense still. Um, take your time. It's such a beneficial, beneficial practice of embodying sensations through your relaxation meditation. Thank you guys so much for joining this part two of our core series here at Warrior Addict. If you have any questions, feel free to to comment, to send me a message. I'm Surf Yogi Jacob on Instagram. Give me a shout out. Otherwise, if you're, if you're getting somewhere with this, if you're enjoying it, feel free to tag Warrior Addict, hashtag WA Core or hashtag Warrior Addict. Again, thank you guys for joining. Hit the subscribe button. Plenty more videos similar to this coming on. Take your time, enjoy the journey. Enjoy your yoga practice, the most important thing. Love your body, love yourself. Thank you guys again for joining.